All right, so I got a few notices from different places for this video. Uh, this is from XOXO, Sadie, XOXO. Samson came out with another video, Cesspool. There is speculation that he throws some shots at Tom also. So I did like a covering of the uh, Mac Lethal disc, disc battle, talking about Tom McDonald being a Nazi. I'm very down with Tom. I don't really like Mac Lethal, never heard of him because I'm not like a super hip hop head. I just got into this on a lot of your recommendations, honestly, uh, and just being able to share as much of the truth bombs that I could find with relevance to what's going on in today's day and age. And then in some of this media stuff that I'm covering and a lot of the music. So for the free thinker reaction series, I've had a lot of fun with that and a lot of you have liked it. So thank you. Uh, but Samson supposedly throwing shots at Tom. I like Samson. I have a lot of his stuff that I have done reviews on. I have a whole playlist for him. So I'm going to be very interested to see if that's a little bit projection or if he actually is throwing shots at Tom and then we'll just kind of break it down. Sometimes wondering if I'm good enough. I ain't looking for a compliment. That's just how it is. I take a step and my book is stuck. It's like everything I do is a masterpiece. I always one up myself every time I drop. So when I go to write the next one, I'm thinking about the last one and how good it was. And I get right as block. I'm my own worst critic. No one's worse. Okay. You know, I'm not going to lie that that hits pretty well. So I'm curious. It's cesspool. Um, so far it's just starting out saying that he's got a bunch of bangers that he has dropped. And he's always trying to make them better. So if they're not better, he feels really self-conscious about it. And then he's a big critic of himself. I mean, this is typical, like, creative person type shit. When I go to write the next one, I'm thinking about the last one and how good it was. And I get right as blocked. I'm my own worst critic. No one's worse with it. To pick apart every word shit is so irking. It's so frustrating. Every single verse I compose is so worthless. How am I supposed to finish it? I can say fuck it like a lot of these cats and give you quantity of equality. You call it a rap and stand back and watch it fall down flat. Because y'all they used to me giving my all not having. If I did, I wouldn't be this big. It's the blood and the sweat that got me this gig. I get tons of respect, but it doesn't mean shit if it doesn't connect. So I need to be sick when I'm coming. Fuck me and decent. I'm different. I'm someone you don't want to start. Beef with the shit with a nothing. Everything is down to a science from the words that I spit to the beat that I pick. To the look at my motherfucking eyes, you can stare into them. You see a man who doesn't care or use them. I don't give a damn if you share my music as long as I think it's dope. I don't compare it to it. Another rapper, I'll never beg for a billboard. I got skills that these little bastards are killed for, but I still. Uh, okay. All right. So he's he's trashing Tom, allegedly, saying, I'm not begging for a billboard. Tom spends a lot of time a lot of energy promoting his own stuff, specifically targeting getting the billboards and people criticize him for various reasons. Some are okay, I think. And then some are kind of stupid. So for one, if you're a guy who's marketing and you are a one man band and you do whatever you need to do and you do all of the different jobs, I definitely understand that because I was up until midnight working on new audio software for myself. And I made videos. I do the news streams. I do the short vids. I do the green screen stuff. I do the like freaking master of manipulation editing bullshit. I'm from the future. Subscribe to me if you want to live. So yes, it's like you have a whole bunch of different hats. And so if somebody sees you perform and then they see you shilling for yourself and marketing your stuff, then they could be like, why are you begging people to watch it? It's like, well, it looks better when someone else begs you to watch my thing, but I don't have somebody else. It's me that does it. Now, the thing that other people are saying, which is a criticism is they're saying that Tom puts a lot of weight into these billboards and the billboard is for iTunes downloads, which a lot less people use iTunes now than 10, 15 years ago. 
So to say, like, I got the most iTunes downloads for, for current day doesn't mean as much as it did a long time ago. So it's like an easier market to win in if you concentrate your base and try to sell to everyone, hey, go download on iTunes and then we can win the billboard for digital downloads. People are calling it like a hollow victory because it's like a market that no one else is really competing in. And so as an independent artist with a large base, he's able to just capture that over and over and over and over again. And he has to push really hard for it. And people are like, bro, why are you pushing so hard for this metric that like very few people are even fighting for? They're, they're doing other things. It's like partially, I get it. The other part of it, it's like he's doing all his own marketing for his own brand, for his own creations. He does all the jobs. So I, I don't have hate for that. I wear a monkey suit and chainmail bikinis. Like, whatever, dude. Dagnar says, Tom, asking for people to download and or watch his videos as a finger to the music industry. Yes, that's the other thing. Is because it's a metric that's achievable as an independent person to win the digital downloads. It is a giant middle finger to the industry when they can't beat him because it's an achievable, uh, it's an achievable metric to win the digital downloads. And then Tom is repeatedly doing that. So he has a stack of billboards saying, I won this, I won this, I won this for each of these songs. Screw you music industry. So I'm with it. I like I'm totally with it. But I'm just saying this is what the shade is coming from other artists is they're they're saying you're putting so much time, effort and energy into getting people to get you a billboard. I've seen all these guys covering the diss tracks and they're just like even if something is positive, you flip it as a negative for the diss. So he's dissing Tom on this billboard thing as something that can be seen as positive, And then he's looking at it from the negative side to make himself look better because Samson doesn't really do much self promotion that I have seen. If you guys are, if I'm wrong, let me know. But like Samson is very quiet and then drops a nuke and then gets really quiet and then drops a nuke. And like, he really doesn't seem to push or build up or be like, hey, I got something crazy coming, something crazy coming, or push this last thing I did. It's not. It's just like totally nothing, nuke. Totally nothing, nuke. Ant Box says he didn't mention Tom by name, so people need to stop speaking for him. I mean, he said he's comparing as a rapper and saying that he's like goaded and that he's not begging for billboards, and everyone knows Tom begs for billboards. So I would say he's definitely throwing a shot there. I, I'm, not, I'm not hating on either of them. I'm just saying I, I agree there's a little bit of a shot there just to say I'm so great and I don't push people to try and get me an award for it. Kiara says, LOL, not smart to try to make yourself look better by dissing Tom. The engaged view, why don't we just call it what it is, Tom making decisions about how to best get his brand out there. Yeah, no shit. The guy's amazing with marketing. I've said that before. Like he uses trend surfing with current events, viral stuff in his shorts and then finish his reaction with, by the way, I have a song out or by the way, my song's coming Friday or by the way, whatever. So it's like, he's constantly building hype towards whatever he's working on or just finished working on. And it's all using the marketing of trend surfing, what's going on in the current day. Pessimistic beg or encourage. What's the difference? Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a good question when it's like the eighth, please go buy it. Please go buy it. Then some people are like, you're begging, but then other people are like, well, we're on a timeline. It's being encouraging. So like I said, I don't hate it, dude. Like I have to show my own stuff. Nobody's shilling my stuff for me. So, so, so I'm, I'm not hating on self-promotion at all, but Samson is saying I'm good and I don't self-promote, which is why he's a lot smaller, honestly. So he is good, but he's a lot smaller because I don't think he puts very much into marketing 
or into production value. And I've said that about most of his stuff. Hollow says Samson might just be reacting to being criticized because there's usually a lot of time between his releases. Yes, it looks like he's referring to Tom, but I don't actually see it as a diss. Very possible. Kaisu says Tom and Samson couldn't collaborate later. I mean, they could. I know Adam Calhoun was very critical of Tom, and then they ended up making two albums together. So I'm not, I'm not uh, talking that smack. Also, they engaged with the dono. Appreciate that. Thank you. Kiera, how often does Tom get messed over by the billboard? Probably most of the time. So despite trying to get that target, he gets screwed over. And I know they like eliminated Amazon downloads from the digital downloads just to, to hurt him. That kind of thing. So I, I, I fully support him going for the billboards and sticking it to the music industry. Every single song. Like I, I don't, I'm not opposed to that at all. Zero percent. Kiera, love Tom and Adam. Yeah, me too. Some of my favorite songs are up in those albums. I'm not going to lie. Very fantastic. Kaisu, read the message above that one. Hang on. This is how Adam and Tom became friends. Adam threw shots at Tom, then they talked, and they kill everything they touched just because Samson threw a jab doesn't mean they they couldn't collab later. Yeah, exactly. That's 100%. Anyway, we'll move on, but I'm very much assuming that was what people were talking about. And he's saying, I give you... Quality over quantity. I'm not pushing out a whole bunch of songs and asking for you to push my stuff. And Tom, who has a ton of stuff and a bunch of songs and pushes for people to promote and buy his stuff, would seem to be on the receiving end of this jab. So I don't think, but I don't think that he like hates him or anything. It's just every rapper is elevating their own self. And that's a way that he is doing that in this song. All right, let's go back a bit. And everything is down to a science from the words that I spit to the beat that I pick to the look in my motherfucking eyes you can stare into him you see a man who doesn't care if you use him I don't give a damn if you share my music as long as I think it's dope I don't compare it to another rapper I'll never beg for a billboard I got skills that these little bastards are killed for but I still get stuck shit starts building up till I'm filled with doubt and I can't seem to filter it out I can't figure it out People wondering why I go ghost right after I post something so live and so dope. Like, why, bro? You lit a fire and let it go. Could have made it grow, but instead you let that shit die slow. Like, I don't know. Dog, you're preaching to the choir. All this perfectionism is eating my desire. Everything I do, I nitpick to pieces. How the fuck I freeze up with my feet to the fire? And on top of all that, they won't get off my back. Sometimes I wish I never did any political tracks. I meant every single word I ever spit in those raps. But now it seems like it's all anybody wishes I ass. That ain't the type of shit I did to get where I'm at. If you went through my catalog and you flipped to the back and did the math and listened to my original act, you'll see a cat dedicated to the pin in the crack. But on the other hand, there's a different att- Okay, yep, I saw, I remember uh, Mises did a song, Dictator 2 Which, if you heard Dictator, it slapped super hard with uh, Burden And talking shit about Joe Biden, amazing But then he made Dictator 2, and it was just saying like Hey dude, I did a few tracks trashing the government He did Gates of Hell, uh, Riot for Me um, and Dictator, which which I thought were fantastic political songs. And he's saying, but 90% about my rap is not about dissing presidents. So, like, that's not who I am only. And so Samson is getting kind of pigeonholed into a spot with the way that he's crushing with some of these political raps. But, I mean, come on, dude. It's like the pandemic hit and everyone needed you to say what you said. And they're saying, Samson, so much crazy stuff is happening. Say more, say more. And he's saying that he is in like his own personal hell of perfectionism in the bars, trying to perfect the pen for the next track. It's not, it's not about pushing it once it's out. It's not about promoting it before it drops. It's about having the perfect next project. So Honestly, like this hits me a lot because I, I get like, it's not writer's block, but I just get kind of like stuck in this creative, uh, I don't know. It's like a creative ceiling where you're just like, people expect a certain quantity from you and then you want everything to be better than it was, but to make it better, it takes longer and more effort and you're one person. 
So then you end up with like, hey, where are you? Why haven't you done X? Why why is this slipping? Why is this slipping in order to be higher quantity? You know, so so I I totally get where he's coming from in this, but this just isn't a song that's gonna slap like those political songs. So it's very interesting because he's saying my stuff before wasn't super political. And I feel like I'm a very top tier rapper, despite not having the marketing prowess to push my own stuff that other people do like Tom McDonald, which was pretty clear with the asking people to share my stuff and begging for billboards. Kira says in Tom's not so secret weapon, Nova. Yeah, no, not everyone has a freaking Nova in the back pocket for real, bro. Shit I did to get where I'm at If you went through my catalog And you flipped to the back And did the math And listened to my original act You'll see a cat Dedicated to the pin and the craft But on the other hand There's a different attack People who were there At the beginning of the path They hate it They say that I just did it for cash And it was all a big grift Just to give me your bag I can't win I feel like I'm ripping in half I don't know if I should get mad Or forget it and laugh Yeah I'll leave my cash app In the description tab But it's your decision To put a tip in my hat I never asked I never held my hand out I never tried to use you To grow my wealth So how the hell are you gonna tell me I did it for money dog I don't even promote myself if I put out a song with a message in it, then it's genuine. It's just the way I feel. I feel like I shouldn't ask you to pay me for that. I'm trying to make you think, not make a sale. Dude, I'm trying to make you think, not make a sale. Bro, the channel's called Freedom to Think, okay? I created all of this, all of this, all of this, so I could... St- do a big middle finger to all the people who censored my shit, who canceled my accounts, who kicked me out of work for dis- for going against uh, these stupid bullshit pandemic guidelines. Okay. So he's saying I had a message to give and I feel that wholeheartedly. The issue is people are going to call you a grifter because you're going for a message and trying to get it out that a whole bunch of people are agreeing with. And he's like, bro, I'm not like everyone support me. Hit me in the cash app, PayPal me, download my song. He's like, I didn't beg for anything. He's like, yeah, I left my cash app in the tab. If somebody wants to throw a tip at me, but I'm not making like buku buku bucks and begging for every single person to financially support me. I I love it. I love it. Because like I said, I have a whole bunch of people in the Free Thinkers Rebellion that support my channel, that support me on Buy Me a Coffee, Patreon, Locals, my Rumble Rooks, YouTube channel members, people that drop donations and streams. And like the best I could do which I don't see other people do is I have edited a scrolling credits page for the end of my videos where I acknowledge all the people that are helping me out who are making this possible because a lot of these videos are fully demonetized or copyright hit or they're copyright shared, et cetera, et cetera. But it's like, if you have a real message and you're trying to push stuff out, you're not really doing it for money specifically. It's just not because the money's not there if you're doing it genuinely. So you can get big enough, you can move ahead and then eventually you start to get some money. But when you're like ground floor grinding, you're going to be putting in work like nobody would even believe. Like it doesn't even make sense to people. Oh, hang on. I got a, I got a dono. Ant box says this song is a shot at Loza and Alexander Bryson gray and Tyson James, not Tom McDonald. That's interesting. Um, I don't follow Loza Bryson and Tyson well enough to know if they're basically, if they're getting shot by this. So Tyson, I have a list of some of his songs. I like some of them. I like some of the, uh, some of the collabs with Bryson, Bryson songs by themselves. He had a couple that, that I, I enjoyed the messaging, but his Twitter, 
I don't really get on with a lot of what he says. Um, Loza, I haven't really followed very well. I'm not going to lie. But Samson's basically saying, like, I'm not here because of the grift. I'm here for the message, and I have the pen to back it up. Kiera wrote, while Tom was sitting with his lights off at the end of his money when he wrote his raps and it hit, has been to the bottom. He and Nova deserve everything they've earned. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Like I said, if you, when you're genuine, you're pushing and grinding the amount of work you're going to do for the amount of money that you're going to get is stupid. Like everybody's going to look at you and say, this isn't even worth your time. What are you doing? But then it is. I just, I hope that Samson maybe t- considers marketing a little bit more as a part of his branding plan. Cause it just seems like he, he just only dedicates to one part of the formula. Tommy says Loza begged Tom for attention. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Loza messaged me. Yeah, he did. He messaged me um, asking for me to, like, do a reaction to one of his songs so that it could beat Tom McDonald before, um, like, the Billboard hits or the Billboard counted or something like that. And I was busy, so that didn't happen. Anyways. Glenn says Loza made a song called Dear Soldiers. You should check it out. It's dedicated to the soldiers Biden left in Afghanistan. See, I haven't heard that. I'd have to check it out. So I'm not, I'm not hating on anyone that's writing stuff with the messaging because I'm here not as a hip hop head or a hip hop historian or whatever. I'm here for the messaging. So the stuff that has the messaging that I can connect to current day politics is what I'm mostly doing all of my reactions to. Like, that's where I specialize. And then Kira says, marketing is a part of the grind. Yeah, like, you have to learn that part in order to get your craft out into the world. Like, I hear people when they talk about a business, it's like, oh, you're so good at baking, you should be a baker. It's like, that's, being a baker is not the number one thing to having a business of a bakery. It's like, you should learn the marketing. You should learn like the legal shit you got to deal with the supply costs and then hire a baker to run the bakery while you make money. That's why you have these labels that do all of this work. And then they hire an artist to come kind of represent the messaging they want to get out there. And most people don't want to be the label doing all the work of the label. So they just take a job as an artist for the label, if that makes sense. But yeah, if you want to actually grow and, and go hard yourself, then part of the grind is learning business stuff. Tommy, at least it's not pushing sex, guns, and violence. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's, that's what I said. I support the messaging for that, uh, despite some people disliking the way people are you know, using it to get their wealth. It's like, well, there's a lot of bad ways to get wealth. So at least that's a, that's a better for the world way to get wealth. Note myself. If I put out a song with a message in it, then it's genuine. It's just the way I feel. I feel like I shouldn't ask you to pay me for that. I'm trying to make you think, not make a sale. part is they put me in a box with all these other dudes that fucking suck and if you think i'm talking about you then i probably am so fucking what yeah sure we share some of the same viewpoints and our core beliefs are probably similar too but i take rap way too serious to act like i don't cringe every time i listen to you everybody say what you want about me but you know damn well every song i killed even if you never agreed with what i said if you know rap then you know i brought the skill it was always real i wanted y'all to feel what i felt at the time when i wrote those lyrics i tried my hardest and put my heart in it and crossed my fingers and just hope you hear Everything they gave you was surface level Me, I dug up dirt with a shovel Dove in deep and we all explored Every single release was like a college course I dissected every topic that I spoke on Did research every time that I wrote songs I tried to be as thorough as I possibly could Always double checking to make sure I didn't get any quotes wrong And that's why I don't do it all the time It comes from a true place of inspiration I'm not gonna make shit up just to put shit out If I don't feel it, I'm not gonna say it I hate this little subgenre of rap And the cesspool that it's grown into I'd wrap a rope around my fucking neck Before I let somebody wrote me in with you damn bro 
Oh, shit. Yeah, that shot's at everybody, bro. And that's what I'm... That I agree with this. He's saying there are people that are putting out garbage, surface level, bad rap, bad beats, misquotes, like not, not really getting into the details of what's going on in the messaging. It's just generic grifting onto a, a set of, you know, the, the ideals. He's like, we may have the same similar ideals and similar core beliefs, but your rap sucks compared to mine. And he's like, and if you think I'm talking about you, I am. <laughs> That's so rude. So, at, yeah, so if he's saying the cesspool is the bad rappers grifting on the political messaging of the day. I have heard some of it. I'm not calling shots on it because I agree with the messaging. But, yes, there are some people that are significantly less talented than other people. Uh, and Samson's raps are both very well thought out, very well researched. Uh, and yeah, like he doesn't get the quotes wrong, but he actually goes way into them. Like his, his video on, uh, I'm trying to think there, cause there's several that are very important. So, uh, it was leave the kids out of it. That was well researched and absolutely needed to be shared messaging. Um, there was, uh, the, what about us with guns? Absolutely incredible. Needed to have that. Well researched. There was, uh, what was the one with the Biden inflation sucking? Like everything sucks with the inflation. Ah, uh, I don't remember what the name of that song was. Um, the other one that that will never leave my uh, my subconscious is Nancy, and he definitely did a lot of research to put that song together. Tons of research, so much. Yeah, never going to unsee Nancy. So that happened. But yeah, he just shat on everybody. So let's uh, back up a little bit and finish it out. I'd wrap a rope around my fucking neck before I let somebody rope me in with you. I just want to rap now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to make you think, not make a sale. That's really good. Listen, I, I like Samson. I have liked Samson. Um, I will continue to like Samson. As I said, because of the way he does what he does, he massively limits his reach. The lack of marketing, the lack of uh, production value, meaning it's usually a stationary camera just on his face, and then he's dropping the bars. That's most of the time. Now, some of the projects went a little bit harder than that, um, but usually it's very simple. Some of them were like shot on an iPhone kind of thing. So he just lays out the bars, and they're good, well thought out, well researched, really impactful, and then he fucking disappears for months. Holo SD says Samson's one of the best. He really ought to get better at marketing himself. Yeah, it, it, so he's kind of like, I don't do that. And it's like, well, okay, you should. You should. But it's okay if that's your line in the sand. You're like, I will be the best with a pen. I don't care about marketing. It's like, okay. You can, you can die on that hill if you want to. But I appreciate the content he puts out. I definitely appreciate the messaging that he gives. He's saying, I just want to rap now. So who knows what the next thing could be about. Uh, so he may say, I'm done doing politics, which honestly, I'm going to be real. It's June 2024. You got the debate going on tomorrow, which I will be live streaming. I think... It's a little bit weak sauce for people to, to be like, I'm going to fence ride or not take a side or whatever. Now. That we're about to have the election because I have too many moderate people in my fan base. 
I don't want to piss them off by choosing the obviously better side for an election. And that's just facts. Listen, both parties suck. Okay, the Republican Party sucks. The Democratic Party sucks. The difference is there are some good people with some good values being pushed in one side. There are none in the other side. None. So I didn't vote for Mitt Romney because Mitt Romney compared to Barack Obama, to me, two wings of the same bird didn't really matter. So I just didn't vote. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But Donald Trump, who we had for four years, versus Joe Biden, who we've now had for four years, if you don't see the difference, the clear, obvious difference, retarded. That's, that's all I got for you. And so for these people who are not calling out that difference and promoting what really could help us out a lot, it's pretty rough to consider yourself like a truther. You're like, I'm a truther person who calls out just things as it is, but I'm not going to choose a side in Biden versus Trump. Come on, dude. So I, I'll say that to everybody. I don't really care. Like, I don't care who it is. It's like you need to make known whether or not you know the difference between a dollar eighty six gas, no wars, a secure border, a choice for your medical decisions versus a winter of illness and death for certain people. Take the shots or you lose your job. We're gonna we're gonna have the whole world fall into madness and we're gonna pay for all of it. Wide open borders, seven dollar gas, endless inflation, and the reason for endless inflation is because of the burr humming of the Federal Reserve paying for all this stupid shit. So there's a lot of people that are like, no, 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 like they're both evil, they're both terrible. It's like one's way more evil and way more terrible than the other. It's not close. And we got to have a comparison. We have two presidents going that had a full term, basically. And we got to see what policies they did, what they had to fight against. And Trump, my, my gripes with Trump, because I don't think he's perfect. Here's my gripes with Trump. He promoted the hell out of that shot. Now, him getting the shot out made it so the lockdowns ended and he gave you a choice. So it's not up to him to, to go against all of the people in the industry that were already there and were going to continue to be there when the whole world said everything he did was wrong. So it didn't even matter what he said. It was his job to give you a choice. Biden said no choice. Trump said you got a choice. And it's up to you to be smart enough to make the choice. Okay, that's on you. Bump stocks. Bullshit. He shouldn't have touched anything with 2A, period. So that's bullshit. And thankfully, Supreme Court killed that. Bad Trump on bump stocks. Because if they get rid of bump stocks, they can get rid of the braces. They can make, uh, they can make suppressors totally illegal. They can, like, ev- all of this different stuff. If they can do one thing, they can do more, and they will do more. So it's all bad, period. Trump freaking messed over farmers and ranchers helped Tyson. Are you, are you saying compared to Joe Biden, Trump hurt the farmers? I mean, he may have helped hurt farmers in an instant with one thing, but I'm just saying, like, are you saying compared to Ohio when they're building like an EV cobalt mine and taking all of the water from the Ohio potato farmers for, for the green agenda? I don't, I don't think that's the same as one person in the meat industry winning over another person in the meat industry. Like you get what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not shilling for that. Like I said, if he did that, then, then that's fine to hell, to hell with that decision. And he made a lot of bad decisions in staffing, obviously, because people were stabbing the Republican base and Trump in the back that he hired, like all the way through to the end and after. So I'm not saying the guy's perfect, but you got to be able to call balls and strikes and if you can't see clear differences in Trump and Biden and call that out as like a supposed truth teller person, like what, where are we at? Where are we at? Kara says, I'm still voting for Trump. I can survive Trump. Yeah, exactly. Like I, 
So here's my problem. I was not very political as a person. I was just a lower middle class guy, right? And then Joe Biden and his policies and his economy made me poor. So I went from middle class and, and kind of thriving under Trump because everything was getting cheaper. I was making more. There was more wiggle room for me than there ever was in the history of my life in 2018 and 19. The best, the best economic life I've ever had. And I was making the median income in America, maybe a little less than the median income in America as a single income household, able to pay for everything, save a little extra, eat steak regularly. It was nice. With Joe Biden, everything stalled out. The recovery was stalled out. There were parts issues. There was supply shortages as a result of policy. Policy decisions created our situation and changed me from a normal lower middle class guy to a poor guy. I I got made into a poor person by a president and their policies. So I got a fucking bone to pick with all of them over that on a personal gripe on top of them demonetizing my shit and canceling four of my TikTok accounts and banning me on Facebook and banning my first Twitter account all the things that could happen on the internet in a bullshit way happened to me. And then all of the shit with the uh, pandemic, I was losing money left and right for not going along with the bullshit that they came out with there. So I'm just like in person, in real life, financially, socially, respective peers, and then on the internet as well, I've been screwed over by one side and the other side sometimes sucks, but ultimately was way, way better for me as a, like, not really political individual. So, I I mean, I'm calling that all day, all night. Antbox with the dono says, I want to say great reaction channel thoughts on Vivek. I like Vivek. I know he has ties to pharma. I don't know what his loyalties are with pharma, but from what he says, it's good. I'd, I'd be interested to see what he does, and I would probably give him the chance to do so. He's way better at calling out bullshit than like anyone on the stage. And I just feel like the loyalties across the board are dubious at best, questionable at best. So I think he's, he's like one of our best shots. I hope that he gets a good job in the Trump administration. I will say that for sure. And he got a lot of the younger, moderate, libertarian, con- conservative, free thinker people to, to look into stuff. I like when people ask open-ended questions and try to get other people to research. That's why I like people like uh, Crowder because it's like they provide all the sources. You could call bullshit, but then you could look at the sources and be like, okay, I have a difference of opinion, but they don't just have a completely different set of facts. Kira, who do I think Trump should choose for VP? Just not a giant rhino. Like, I don't know. I don't overly care as long as it's not a giant rhino. That's my opinion. Tina says, I'm old and couldn't believe people actually voted for Biden. If people Googled Biden, they wouldn't be surprised at all his BS. Life was good under Trump, under Biden. I'm seriously struggling. Yeah, yeah, I I feel that. Seriously feel that. Tommy says, Biden brought out the asshole in all of us. Facts, 100%. Like, I'm so much less nice than I was when Trump was the president. Because I was just like, oh, all these crazy blue-haired liberals with their, their hair on fire screaming about Trump and, like, they don't know anything. And I just, like, was nice and tolerated that. And now I'm like, no, you guys are wrong about everything and basically retarded. So, and here's why. A, B, C, D, E, F, G reasons. I will say the the whole illegal immigration thing, I'm not down with it. I'm not down with them importing human slaves, guns, drugs, all that. It's like I'm a very pro 2A person, but I'm not pro black market arms dealing into the cities, right? Like they want to, they want to restrict us with all these gun control legislation, but then not close the border. And so you're just giving the cartel an additional market, black market for guns, which would explode if the legal market closes. You're not helping anything. You're just hurting the good people and they're hurting good people on purpose. And that all comes from one side, hurting good people on purpose. Okay. Now, like I said, there's uniparty garbage with the Republicans, like the Patriot Act, and, you know, the, the military industrial complex shilling, shilling for the Israel lobby. Like there's big, big problems 
on both sides with spending lots of our money and giving priority to things that don't matter. But it's so much faster on the one side and there's virtually no good people on that side. And then there's some good people on the other side who I could say are just objectively telling the truth and trying to do what's best for the American people. Some of them. Rebel says, I'm not pro criminals with guns. Yeah, me either. I have a concealed carry permit. I live in the great state of Georgia, which is now a constitutional carry state. So we don't even need a concealed carry permit, but in having a concealed carry permit, that means that I have a cleaner record than uh, like almost all cops. And you can look into the statistics of that. That's true. I've never been arrested, never been to jail, prison. I, I've never uh, had like a, I don't know, restraining order, anything like that. I've never, uh, I've never even gotten a traffic ticket. I have, I have the most boring record ever. So for them to talk about like needing to restrict me from getting that, is just such bullshit. It's unbelievable bullshit. <sighs> okay. Well, anyway, this really went off the rails. Like, this went long. Darmac says, ah, he gave farmers a shitload of money from the China tariffs. Yes, yes, I did hear that. So um, one person was saying that he screwed over some farmers in favor of Tyson. I don't know the details on that. But I do know that he helped the farmers a lot more than Biden. Like, that's not even close. OJ says, glad it's working out. Yeah, me too. Because if I'm able to use Rumble Studio and then multi-stream, like this whole stream has gone to Rumble, to Locals, to YouTube, and to X. And if they're able to handle that, and then I hijack the audio with Voice Meter Banana, and I hijack the video with um, OBS Studio, then I have it running through my stream deck, so I can do all the different cool scenes and transitions and whatever using that software. It's all boring to you guys, but like if you look at these other people like Tim Poole and Steve Crowder and all them, they have like a bunch of people working to make their cool things operate. I'm one person and I make it operate the best I can. So that's all. So I'm glad I stayed up uh, until midnight doing this so that it would work. And I hope you guys have a good day. Tomorrow night, we're doing the debate on YouTube. CNN can go fuck themselves. <laughs>